YouTube, Facebook, and Tumblr fans, it's time for another classic review, and this one in particular is a very long time coming. Yes, we are going to be talking, as you can see by the title, about Queen Strike's fourth studio release entitled Empire. Now, a lot of people consider Promised Land to be the last good Queen Strike record of the Tate era. However, I disagree. I have actually tried getting into Power or Promised Land numerous times. However, I really just can't get into it. It's just kind of weird. I mean, Tate's vocals, of course, are good as always, but other than that, musically, that album just doesn't impress me. So as far as this one goes, Empire, which is the album I'm going to be reviewing now, is the end of the line, the end of the road, so to speak. So before we get into the actual review, I just wanted to show off a few CDs that I got, like I said I would for this one. Trivium, Vengeance Falls, and of course, you know, you can kind of see my little setup back there with the Windows Media Player that I kind of use as a cheat sheet. No scripts, guys. This is all unedited right here. So I use it as a cheat sheet just for the song names because I can't, I can't honestly remember some of these song names for in order, anyways. But when it comes down to it, Empire is my second favorite Queensrÿche release. It has the most maturation on Tate's vocals, and musically, it's probably one of the most sound as well. So it's very mature. Tate and the rest of the crew are definitely just reaching that peak anyways. They were coming off of the success of Operation Mindcrime in the late 80s, and you know, while Operation Mindcrime had a story base, Empire has more of a theme base. It has to do with a lot of different things, and the tone and the production and everything that goes into it definitely sets a darker atmosphere, especially in songs like Empire, Resistance, uh, Best I Can in the Beginning, and a little bit in Jet City Woman, and of course, anybody listening. So I'm going to go through a track by track, tell you guys what I think of the album in its entirety, and then give it a rating, of course, as always. So the album starts off with Best I Can. It's a little silent in the beginning, but then it starts off with some synthesizers. And these synthesizers are definitely used to a greater advantage. They really haven't done much with synthesizers in the past. So it's kind of a nice, refreshing trip back to the 80s, as of course this was in 1990, so, you know, there is that. So, it has a really, really great intro, some awesome uplifting lyrics, but the beginning kind of doesn't make much sense to me personally, where it's an answering machine, it's a voicemail of someone saying that they misplaced the gun or they'll never find the gun, so... I don't know what that has to do with being the best man that you can, so... <laughs> but other than that, it does set the atmosphere, it does set the tone for the rest of the album, especially in the dark, kind of echoey production. Not necessarily too distorted, but it is very echoey and very hollow sounding, which does definitely add to the atmosphere. So, the Thin Line is another one, they use some great vocal effects, and the guitar work is really great in this one. It kind of drags on for a bit, but it is one of my favorite songs, so I'll give it a little bit of slack. Um, Jet City Woman, kind of the same story, it's not necessarily the fastest song on the album, and the guitar work is really great on there. Um, Lyrical-wise, it's... It's alright, I suppose. It's not really my favorite, lyrical-wise. That would probably go to either Another Rainy Night Without You or Empire, or of course Silent Lucidity, which is arguably the most diverse track on the album. So, back to um, Jet City Woman. This one has a phenomenal chorus. Really love the chorus and the use of the, use of the vocal effects, as well as the guitars surrounding it. So, then we get on to Della Brown, which is probably my least favorite track on the album. Yes, it does have a little bit of blues atmosphere to it. It has that bluesy influence, and it's a little bit of a slower track, more mid-tempo, I suppose. But I don't know, it just, it really didn't catch my interest too much. So with that, um, and we're on to Another Rainy Night, which is a more of a ballady kind of track, more akin to, say, I don't believe in love, well, lyrical-wise anyways, not really tempo-wise, but as far as that goes, one of my favorite songs. I really like it. Second song I heard after the title track, which brings me to the title track, Empire. Definitely one of the darkest, most just kind of atmospheric songs on the album. Begins with a voicemail, of course, again. The three songs that voicemails appear in are Best I Can, Another Rainy Night, and more of the midsection, as well as the beginning of Empire. And it fits the atmosphere perfectly. It sets up for kind of like a crime scene kind of feel to it. I don't know, maybe I'm just pulling stuff out, but this is what I felt when listening to this song. It's kind of this dark and desolate place. So, 
I really like the structure of it. I love just the guitar work as well as the lyrical content. So another thing that I should mention is the vocal effects used in the chorus, which is another really great thing that they really hadn't um, done much with, excuse me, in the past with albums such as Mind Crime or The Warning. So, or of course Rage for Order, but then again, I don't know, they did a lot of different things on Rage for Order. So with Empire, this is probably my favorite song with not uh, Resistance or Silent Lucidity, Another Rainy Night. Damn it, there are so many good songs on here. Resistance, this is a more upbeat track. It's more just up-tempo and fast and got some really great guitar work. I really like the intro in this one. A lot of great vocal effects, same as always. And Tate's voice has definitely matured, as I said prior. Probably one of the most mature sounding album vocally anyways, as well as just <laughs> in general with the musicianship. So Silent Lucidity is one of those songs that really they haven't done anything with. They haven't done anything like this. There's an al there's albums such as Mind Crime, such as The Warning, even their EP didn't really experiment in this kind of stripped down ballady kind of style. And it's a little bit slower and Tate kind of sings in this soft, soothing voice and it, I don't know, I just really like it. It's a really great song, really great ballad, one of my favorites on the entire album. And that brings us to Hand on Heart and One and, and, one and Only, of course. Um, these songs are good, more so filler, I suppose. One and Only being the lesser, of course. And then Anybody Listening, which is the longest song on the album at 7 minutes and 41 seconds. Now, this one kind of drags on for a bit, but it's more progressive than the last one. Queenstrike have always been that band that's more in the lines of progressive metal, but on the simpler end. This one definitely continues that trend, however, anybody listening is a lot more progressive than what we've seen on the rest of the album, as well as an awesome, awesome closer. So, final rating is probably going to be a 9.8 out of 10. Really enjoy this album, really enjoy it. The only two songs that I would really cut from the mix are Della Brown and Hand on Heart. I don't know, I just don't really like them that much. Other than that, you know, I do realize the influence on Della Brown, of course, the bluesy kind of style, and it does add a bit to the album. And of course, uh, Hand on Heart, I don't know, I just couldn't really get into it much. So other than that, you know, 9.8 out of 10, this is Midnight Strike 3625, keep calm and rock on.